in this video, I'd like to walk you through two specific things, and both of them I feel are pretty important. Number one is if your rack mounted Dell server is making a lot of noise with its fans, it's probably because it's trying to keep itself cool, and that's great. However, we can also manipulate the actual fan speed. And the benefit of that is that in the event you need to record or you need that server really close to you, we can artificially lower the fan speed, but want to keep an eye on the actual temperatures so we don't harm it. So let me walk you through that as well as how do we, once we have a lab environment with all these components, the NSX manager, some edge nodes and everything else, how do we gracefully shut it all down and snapshot it appropriately so that when we want to, we can restore exactly that point and come back to that point to rehearse or practice something again and again and again. So let me walk you through both of those options right now. So a quick and easy way to control the fan speeds is to use this tool right here. It's the IPMI tool for Windows. So I just did a quick search for IPMI tool space Dell. That was the first hit. You download that, extract it, and then install it. So it's simply a command line tool that I have installed here locally on my management computer. The second thing we'd want to do is verify that iDRAC is willing to accept commands that we would send from this IPMI tool. And to do that, we're going to log into the iDRAC. So this is the iDRAC on server six, the physical server six that I got on eBay for around $300 that has 256 gigs of RAM. And all I had to do effectively was add an existing hard drive that I had and away I went. So here inside of iDRAC, and this is iDRAC version eight. And here under iDRAC settings, if we click on network, and then we can either scroll down or we can click right here on the hyperlink that'll take us down to the section called IPMI settings. We wanna make sure there's a check here in this checkbox. It says enable IPMI over LAN, and then specify that the channel privilege level limit will be administrator. This simply allows the IPMI tool with the correct credentials to look at and modify details on the physical server, including the fan speeds. And then what I do is I've got three batch files and they're called fans high, fans low, fans medium, and they have a .bat extension. And that way I can just go ahead and go to this folder, double click on the one I want, and it'll set the fans. So for example, if I say fans dash high in the background, it ran the script, and it just kicked those fans into high gear. Now, although I have sound baffling behind me, so it's hard to hear those fans, we can also look at that fan information right here in iDRAC by clicking here on hardware. And then under hardware, there's an option for fans. So we'll go to fans. And this is showing the current speed, which is 8,000 and change regarding revolutions per minute. And that's because of what I just specified for it to do from my batch file. So to compare and contrast, if I went to fans low.bat and double clicked on that, in the background, it just lowered the fans. And then here in just a few seconds, once we click on refresh, we can see that the fan speeds are coming down. And after about 45 seconds and one more refresh, which I'll do right now, that's gonna show the current fan speed. So now it's about 16% of maximum. When before, when I set it to high, it was like at 44%, which means based on the batch file that we have, we could actually have the fans go much faster than that if we wanted to, but be aware that the faster those fans run, the more noise they're going to make. I'd also like to point out right here before I show you the batch file, is that we want to also periodically check on the temperature. So here in iDRAC under server, if we click on power slash thermal, then there's another tab right here for temperatures. We just want to verify that our servers and our CPUs are not getting too hot. And this becomes especially important if we're manually controlling the fan speeds. So this is the inlet temperature around 80 degrees and the exhaust temperature about 100. And these two are the processor temperatures. So if you have a really heavy workload and you have the fans excessively low, the temperature would be expected to rise. So if you're doing the manual speed for the fans, you might want to come in occasionally and just verify what those temperatures are. You can also retrieve this information with the IPMI tool as well. So now with that being said, let me go ahead and show you the batch files. So if we right click on fans high and I'll click on edit in notepad and let me make the font here a little bit bigger. So this batch file simply changes to the folder where I have the IPMI tool installed and then it runs the IPMI tool. And then this syntax, I just did through a Google search. So I'm specifying the username, I'm using root and the password of Calvin. So if you change that password, you'd wanna go ahead and put the current password in. And then the dash H for host, this is the IP address of the iDRAC for server six. And I don't recall why I have two entries here, but this is the one right here that actually sets the actual fan speed and that's in hexadecimal. And that's set as a percentage. So if we bring up the calculator here and let me go ahead and bring up the programmer calculator. So in hexadecimal, I'll select that. If we put in two C in decimal, 
that is 44. And so initially when I set the fans to high, it showed those fans around 44%. And then for my other batch files, go to fans low, we'll right click and edit that. It is set for one zero in hexadecimal. So if we go to the programmer version of the calculator and we put in one zero in decimal, that is 16, which means 16%. So right now, because I have the fan set using this batch file, if we go back to the hardware and fans, we're gonna see how that lines up right there. So here it's set up as 16% and that's no coincidence. That's what I told it to do with the batch file. So again, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And for additional details on the IPMI tool, you can just do a Google search for documentation because it can be used for a lot more than just setting the actual fan speeds. It can also be used for retrieving information such as the current fan speed or temperatures from your host. All right, so now that we've taken a look at how we can control the fan speeds, let's talk next about a graceful shutdown and snapshot of our topology. So we've already talked previously about how we can enable snapshots for the NSX manager. So I won't repeat that process. We covered that earlier. But as far as gracefully bringing everything down, and that's important if you want to bring it up and have everything work, here's what I'd recommend. Number one, a CLI shutdown of NSX manager. So in our case, that would mean SSHing over to the NSX manager and once authenticating, typing in shutdown to confirm and allow that to gracefully shut everything down. Second thing I do is from our nested vCenter, so I'll shut that out as nested vSphere client, we'd wanna go ahead and do a graceful shutdown of the guest OS for any running VMs. And that would include on ESXIC and our topology, that would include our two edge nodes and any VMs that we happen to bring up for testing and working with, we wanna go ahead and gracefully shut those down. So if the VMs you're working with, if they do not have VMware tools installed, you'd wanna go into those guest OSs directly and do a graceful shutdown there. If they do have VMware tools installed, you can do that graceful shutdown of the guest OS directly from the nested vSphere client, no problem. Then third, once we've shut down all of our VMs, including the edge nodes, third, what we wanna do is go ahead and do a graceful shutdown of our nested vCenter. And we're gonna do that from our nested VCA management console, and we'll do a shutdown of vCenter. And then for our fourth step, we'd wanna to go to the physical or the parent vCenter. So I'll write that as parent slash physical vCenter. And that's the one that's in charge of our parent physical host, which in our case is ESXA6. And from there, we'd wanna do a graceful shutdown of any of our nested ESXA hosts. And because those ESXA hosts that we've deployed, in our case, we have three of them, ESXA A, B, and C, they all are being deployed in VMware. And as part of that, they already have the VMware tools associated with them. We can do that shutdown from the parent slash physical vCenter using the parent slash physical vSphere client. All right, so then once our nested ESXA hosts are all shut down, our fifth step from the parent vCenter environment would be to remove all snapshots. And that would be snapshots for ESXIA and ESXIB and ESXIC and our nested vCenter and our nested NSX manager. So that may take a minute or two, depending on how much has changed. And then once all those snapshots are removed, step number six would be to create the snapshots on all those VMs again. And that way we're not creating multiple instances or multiple snapshots. We're gonna have at any time one snapshot of our complete nested environment and not have like five or six copies of snapshots, which could be problematic over time. So then once we have our snapshots, number seven would be to go ahead and do a shutdown of the parent vCenter using the management console for that parent vCenter. And then once that's done, step number eight would be to go to the host client in our case, it'd be on ESXA6, and then from the host client, do a shutdown of the physical server. So what I've done over time is I create a list of those exact steps that I need to follow, and then when it comes time to do a shutdown, I don't just try to remember each and every step. I simply go to the list and just go through it step by step by step. And that way we can consistently gracefully shut down our environment, and when it comes time to bring it up, we can consistently bring up a known good state. So in this light, let me walk you through the graceful shutdown of our nested lab environment. So our first stop is the NSX manager. So if you don't want to SSH over there, because this is currently running in our VMware vSphere parent environment, we could just open up a remote console or a browser interface to that and do it there as well. Either way is great. We simply want to do a shutdown from the command line at this NSX manager. So from the parent vCenter, we'll go ahead and select the NSX manager, right click on it and ask for a remote console. There it is. We'll go ahead and log on as admin and supply the password we set up for the NSX manager. And if we have a typo, we'll correct that. 
Fantastic, and now that we're logged in, we'll just type in shutdown. So we'll type in shutdown, press enter, then Y-E-S, press enter, and that is on its way down. So we'll go ahead and close the remote console, and then we'll go to step two, which is to shut down any guest VMs that we currently have inside of our nested environment, including edge one and edge two. So here we are at vSphere.nested. We'll go ahead and click on the very top of the tree, click on VMs, take a peek at who's currently running. So I've got B2, A1, Edge2, Edge1, and Mint. I'll select all of them, right click, go to power, and then we'll do a graceful shutdown of the guest OS by clicking right here on shutdown guest OS and clicking on yes. And those five are on their way to a nice graceful close. All right, what's next? So now that the guest VMs are on their way down, our next step would be to do a graceful shutdown of the nested vCenter using the nested vCenter management console. So we'll do that next. So here is the management console for the nested vCenter. We're gonna log on as administrator at vSphere.nested, click login, and then up on the right, we'll click on actions and click on shutdown and click on yes. So now our nested vCenter is on its way to a nice graceful shutdown. So that was step three. Next, we want to go to the parent slash physical vCenter and we want to do a shutdown of our nested ESXi host, which in our case is ESXi A and B and ESXi C. So here is our parent vCenter. So there's the single sign-on domain, vSphere.physical. I was in dark mode, but it was giving me problems, so I switched back to light mode. So in any case, what we want to do here is go to any VMs that are here. So we'll click on VMs with the top of the tree selected, and there is ESXi A and B and C. And this vCenter right here, that's the vCenter that's currently running in the parent environment on the physical network. So all we want to do now is shut down the three nested ESXi hosts, which are right here, those three. So we'll right click, click on power, and then click on shut down guest OS. Also, if you're not quite sure whether or not the VMs running on those ESXi hosts are completely shut down, you could go in and check individually on those hosts using the host client, or just wait for a few additional minutes just to make sure that the edge nodes and any other running VMs have had a moment or two to gracefully shut down. So presuming that they have, Right here, we'll click on shut down guest OS, and then we'll click on yes, and those three ESXi hosts are on their way to a graceful shutdown. All right, what's next? So that was step number four. Number five, once all the nested VM components, including the NSX manager, the nested vCenter, and also the three nested ESXi hosts, as soon as they're all completely powered off, we want to go ahead and remove all the snapshots. And we're going to do that from the parent or physical vCenter vSphere client. So back here at vSphere.physical at the parent vSphere environment, we'll go ahead and click on refresh and ESXIC is down, ESXIB isn't, and ESXIA is on its way. Also, I have a folder. If we go to VM and templates view, here are all the VMs right here. And between the previous screen and this one, now all of them are down. So A, B, and C our NSX manager, and also our vCenter nested, those are all powered off. So we're gonna go ahead and select all of those. And then with all of them selected, we'll right click, and then we'll click on snapshots. And we are going to delete all snapshots for those five VMs and click on delete all. So this is the point in our story where we wanna look at recent tasks. I wanna go ahead and just show running tasks. And we wanna wait until the snapshots are completely deleted on all five of those VMs. And that process may take anywhere between like a couple minutes up to 30 or 40 minutes, depending on how many changes we made to the disks between now and our previous snapshot, because it's gonna merge all the data from the snap disks all the way back to the parent disks. So again, we'll give that as long as it takes. And also once it's done, I would encourage you to look at the all entries for all recent tasks or even the failed, just to make sure if there's a failure or a problem that we're aware of it. So I'm gonna go back to all running tasks and we'll give this about five or 10 minutes to complete. Also, while those are being deleted because we only have one physical host, if you wanna take a look at how it's doing, we can go back to our host and clusters view, select our host and then go to monitor and minimize the recent tasks. And then here we can look at the performance charts. So the CP utilization recently went way, way down. That's because we just powered off all those VMs. The memory usage just went way, way down because we just powered off all those VMs. And if we scroll down, we now have a whole bunch of disk activity. So the green here in this output represents latency. So the latency in green here is under two and a half milliseconds. So that's screaming great. And that's because the physical server is using its local hard drive. And then as far as the actual 
I.O. Looks like we're somewhere over 300,000 kilobytes per second. As our physical host, ES6i6, in our case, is reading from and writing to its local hard drive as it merges those differencing disks into their parent disks as part of removing our snapshots. So if we go back to our recent tasks, yep, that is still underway. So once again, we'll just let that finish. And also just as a reminder, if we look at our VM and templates view here, and we look at this folder, we didn't have to place the vCenter as a dedicated VM on the parent ESXi host. We could have nested that inside of one of our other ESXi hosts. But the reason I moved this nested vCenter over here to the physical server, and also the reason I applied the NSX manager directly on the physical server, in our case, ESXi 6, was simply for performance functionality. And also it makes it a lot easier here to go ahead and manage the snapshots all right, so it's been a few minutes and now all those snapshots have been deleted. And then before we leave this, what we want to do is select all these VMs, right click, and then go ahead from right here, click on snapshots and click on take snapshot, which would take a snapshot individually of each of those five VMs. And that way in the future, if we ever need to restore to exactly that point, we can do exactly that. So once we tell it to take the snapshot and confirm that action, let's take a look at our final two steps. So our next logical step then would be to go ahead and shut down the parent vCenter environment. So you go to the management console for the physical vCenter or the vCenter that's managing the physical environment and simply use the drop down like we did earlier in the nested environment. And once again, do a shutdown, but this time shutting down vCenter in the parent environment. And that would look like this. So here's the management console for vSphere.physical. We'll log in. And then from here, we'd click on actions and click on shutdown, at which point it would ask us to confirm that action and then proceed to gracefully bring down vCenter in the parent slash physical environment. And then the very last step to go ahead and power off the host itself, we go to the host client and from the host client for ES6i6 on our physical server, we simply go ahead and tell it to shut down the physical server. So here is the host client for ES6i6. We'll click login. And from here, we simply click on shutdown. And because we've already shut down all the VMs that are running, including a graceful shutdown of the vCenter, we can simply click on shutdown here and that will power off our physical host. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this series of videos regarding building a nested lab environment to get some hands-on practice. And as a quick recap, we can do all of this with some hardware that might run us about $300, throw in a hard drive or two that you might have lying around. We can use licensing as part of vMug Advantage and then have a nice little playground to play with not only vSphere, but also to play with NSX. And although we've walked through many of the steps to help verify our nested lab environment, if you want details and step-by-step -step walkthroughs on each of the components regarding NSX, including things like using the NSX application platform and IPS and some of the advanced features of NSX, again, please feel free to check out our courses over at CBT Nuggets. So thanks for joining me in this journey and I'll see you my friend in another set of videos very, very soon.